Happy Wednesday, or whenever you watch this, we're super excited you're here with us on our Students Talk video this week. Uh, we love you joining us here as we get to talk about some things we don't have time to on Sunday nights. So today we are starting, or this month we're starting a new story called, or series called True Story. Right. right and what right. we love about True Stories are movies that have been made from True Stories. Those are usually the best movies. And so Roger is going to share with us one of his Favorite movies that comes from a true story. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite movies that comes from a true story is Toy Story. No, it's true. Toy Story is not a true story. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Um, <laughs> we we will see Toy Story in the in this week's sermon, but unrelated to that, um, one of my favorite movies that's made uh, from a for real story is a movie called Miracle. All right, this movie came out in 2004, and it is a hockey movie. And I know that you guys are thinking, this is Northern Kentucky, nobody plays hockey. And I understand that. I grew up in Southern Indiana, and in Southern Indiana also, no one plays hockey. You're going to tell us about the Mighty Ducks, right? <laughs> if only. I wish. Um, but so, anyway, the, but this movie is based on a story of, I'm trying to look for, I'm looking at the, at the thing here, trying to remember what year this was. 1980, Winter Olympics. Okay, so... In the 1980 Winter Olympics, um, basically we had to send a team, um, and because that's how it works, we had to send amateurs um, because you don't send like professional athletes to the Olympics, or we didn't in that day. And so, so we basically were sending college students, like the best college students we could find, would gather up. They would practice for seven months to play before the Olympics. Sometimes even more than that, um, so they could kind of be a team, and then they would go out and try to win. Um, but in this era, the Russians won, like, every year. Like, every year the Russians would win. And so, like, uh, and not even, like, by a kind of close margin. Like, they were excellent. Because, like, these people were, I think the Russians were, like, were, like, were paid to be Olympians. So, like, all they did was hockey, like, all year long. Comp you know, competing against, like, guys who were, like, juniors and seniors in college. Um, but anyway, the story is about Herb Brooks. Um, who's played by Kurt Russell, um, who your parents are a big fan of. Um, but, uh, so Kurt, Kurt Russell does a great job and plays this coach. And basically this coach, um, just like, I mean, uh, you guys have seen sports movies before. It's always like the quirky coach and they don't really know how, like what to make of him or how to figure him out. And he's like, he, this guy's just mean. And you get to the end, it's like, well, he's not mean. He was like trying to get you guys to a certain place. And um, his, his, one of the lines that they say, or that he says in the movie is basically, um, if, maybe if I can get them to hate me enough, they'll stop hating each other. <laughs> because <laughs> a common <laughs> enemy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the uh, the students, some of them are from like Minnesota and Boston, and like the Boston folks hate the Minnesota folks, and like so there there starts in this war. It's kind of remember the Titans ish, um, where there's like kind of two camps or well different camps of people. It's less racial divide. It's more because they're all, I mean they they play hockey, so <laughs> there's less racial divide in the sport of hockey. But um, but yeah, so they're just kind of divided. They come together um, and, and eventually get to compete. And, and all of a sudden, they start doing better and better and better um, over the course of this movie. Um, and then it comes down to like the final game. And so, uh, spoiler alert, I'm sorry. Comes down to a final. I won't, I won't spoil all the way at the end, but most of the way there. Nobody's surprised. They made a movie out of it. We didn't like get out in the first round. Um, and so we make it, uh, make it to, down to the final game. Of course, we're playing against, actually not even the final, it's the quarterfinal game, semifinal game. We're playing against the Russians, but everybody kind of knows it's the final game because the other two teams, neither one of them are as good as was these two. And so, um, yeah, basically, uh, they play all the way to that point, and, and all of a sudden there's, you know, U.S. has this goalie named Jim Craig who's, like, killing it and, like, doing, basically he's the best goalie in the world at that point, we kind of figure out, or they, or they, they think so. And so it comes down to the end, and even, so for the, it's, it's a real thing, and so um, Al Michaels is a guy who announces sports games. Yeah. And so Al Michaels, in 1980, announced this game. Okay. And so he, like, basically they use, like, a 30-second sound clip of Al Michaels. Okay. They, they get the real Al Michaels in 2004 to voice this game as ah. the actor. Nice. And so then they fade from real Al Michaels into like 1980 Al Michaels and like they fade his voice. So then like even so the last 20 seconds you're hearing the actual recording, but you're like watching oh, the actors awesome. do it. And so like the way that they weave the old story and the new story is super cool. Yeah. So the movie Miracle 
It's probably on Disney Plus. I think it's it's it is definitely it's a Disney, Disney movie. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, so. I saw it on there. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. if you're looking for uh, yeah a little bit of history, but also just a really interesting story, um, if you're one of the of possibly very few hockey fans around well, so here. Well, so I will say there is a at least one student our middle school ministry that plays hockey. That they I do own. hockey here. So there is a hockey oh. league. Yeah, the, but I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you play hockey, you know, comment in the section. Please, but I, please, please. Let there us is know. a Northern Kentucky Ice Skating Center, but there is a really nice hockey center up in Sharonville, oh. and I believe that's where the main hockey people play in this area. Like the the oh. the, the the kids that are really interested yeah, yeah, yeah. drive up there. I had a, we had a high school student who actually did that, and then he moved to Michigan. And then actually played oh, against. Oh, and like, then for real gets to play. Yeah, played yeah. like yeah, like that's where hockey is like aggressive, you know. Oh yeah, so, yeah. Anywhere um, north north of north of us, north of Indiana, like people start getting real serious about their hockey. Yes, that's very very true. So yeah, that uh, there is there is some hockey yeah. around. But so it, watch, yeah. learn a little bit more about hockey. It's a, I mean it's a cool sport. Like we don't play it here because it's really hard to do whenever it's like fifty degrees out most of the time. Like yes. they play it up north because. Obviously, it's freezing cold, and they get to play hockey a little more naturally. That's very so. true. And the Winter Olympics are a year away, so oh, that's you know, true. be ready. If you watch Miracle this year, then you can be ready for the hockey next year. That's true. Which is the best event, in my opinion, at the Winter Olympics. That's I. I well, Snowboarding's pretty cool. It's up there. It's up there. I think I think I have so many like fun winter events because honestly, winter, the Winter Olympics feels like somebody said, "All right, we need." A hundred events, and then they had like twenty already figured out. Yeah, and they were like, "Uh, let's do. Can we like slide a rock and try to get it toward a point? <laughs> like, yeah, we'll call it curling. <laughs> All right. Well, how many different ways can we count sledding as an event? That's okay, you got bob sledding, and then you got the well, single you, yeah. sled, and then you got. The, the it feels skeleton. like somebody was just like like really needed more to be able to like justify an Olympics. So the thing, the reason why I think we came up with the Winter Olympics is because it's like, man, these countries in Eastern Europe. <laughs> And this country called Canada can't yep. win a single summer medal. We've got to figure out a way That's true. that they can get involved. Right? Oh, let's put skiing in Olympics. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I think that I think you've got something there. <laughs> That's my theory. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, anyway, um, so Miracle is fun to watch. Go watch hockey. Watch the Winter Olympics. We're pitching everything here. Yes. Just watch all the things. Um, and in addition to that, watch uh, this coming series that we're going through, which is True Story. Um, so, in this first week of True Story, we're going to learn. Um, yeah, we're going to learn some pretty cool lessons. We're going to hear about Cain and Abel. Um, but one of the things that they wanted us to talk about that we just don't think we're going to have time to talk about during the sermon um, is the story of Joseph, right? And so we're going to talk a little bit through that story here and how it relates to Week One of our true story series. So Joel, do you wanna give them a, a Joseph overview? Yeah, so uh, you know the Old Testament, this is in the book of Genesis. The story really of Joseph kind of starts in, in chapter 37. However, to kind of understand where Joseph is coming from, you gotta understand his father. His father was Jacob, it was Jacob and Esau. Jacob changed his name to Israel, but God changed Jacob's name to Israel. So when you hear of the nation of Israel, that mm -hmm. is Joseph's dad, all right? Um, and so Joseph is born, he is the 11th son of mm -hmm. Jacob or Israel. I, yeah. I will refer to him as Jacob because it's easier than calling right. him Israel. Um, calling him Israel kind of gets it confused, but. You know, especially because there's a country. Like yes. Israel feels like we're talking about a place, not a person. And yeah, yeah totally. absolutely. And so there are 12 total sons of Jacob. Um, Benjamin is the last. Um, and that's where the 12 tribes of Israel come from, or the 12 sons. Well, all of these sons of Jacob were born of different women. Um, most of most of his wives or concubines or whatever would have either one or two or three, uh, but Rachel, who is his favorite wife, Jacob's favorite wife, she had two sons, and one of those sons was Joseph. And since Joseph was the oldest son from his favorite wife, Jacob un unfairly favored Joseph over any of the other sons. I mean, these mm -hmm. these kids don't get to pick who their mom and dad are. Right. You don't get to pick who your mom and dad are. None of us do. But Jacob unfairly. Uh, gave favor to Joseph and was very, very vocal about it. And in chapter 37, you'll read about Joseph being given this coat of many colors, right? Mm. A lot of you have probably heard that story. A technicolor dream coat. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and so Joseph was given this in front of all of his brothers. And I just want you to imagine this scenario, you know, like you're in a large family and everyone else has like a normal coat, like an off-brand coat. And yeah. then like your one brother gets a brand new like Columbia jacket. 
-hmm. Like that's essentially what's happening in this story is everyone else is wearing normal attire, but then someone comes in with the fanciest coat you can find. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a gift from the dad who doesn't give any other gifts to the other kids. And so what that does is it makes the other 10 sons, because Benjamin isn't born yet, the other right. 10 sons extremely insecure and jealous towards Joseph. And what doesn't help the situation is that Joseph starts having these dreams. Mm -hmm. And he has two dreams. And at the end of both of these dreams, basically his brothers are bowing down to him in some form or fashion. Right. I'm, I'm not going to go through the specifics of it. I encourage you to go read it. This yep. is Genesis 37. But his brothers are just like sick of this guy. Like, we already know you're favored by our dad. We already know he doesn't care about us. He only loves you. Like, it literally says this. I can't even believe it's written like this in the Bible. <laughs> it says this in verse 4, chapter 37. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Before that, in verse 3, it says, Now Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. <laughs> so he loves him more than the others. They see this. They hate him for it. And so it gets to this point, this boiling point, where he's also having these dreams that they're going to bow down to him, and they're all going to serve him, and he's which telling is, them Which this. is not what they want to hear, yes. right? Like, they already feel like he's, they already kind of know he's the favorite. And then he's saying, like, oh, and, and you're going to worship me. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, it's... He basically like took advantage of this. He, he's kind of acting like a brat, you know. He could have kept this dream to himself or maybe just to his dad. He didn't have to share it with his brothers and remind them of it. Well, it kind of got to a boiling point where his brothers are just absolutely sick of him. And the brothers are off with the flock, and Joseph is probably just hanging out with his dad because he's a daddy's boy, essentially. And Jacob says, okay, go, go see what your brothers are doing. Make sure that they're all right. And so Joseph has to travel to the place that his brothers are. Well, when the brothers see him coming from far off, they're like, all right, we got to do something about this. This is, this is getting out of hand. Mm -hmm. He needs to be humbled. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's always bad when you get a bunch of dudes who are angry together. Like when it goes from just like one person being mad to like a mob mentality, like right. that's when things get bad. Okay? Yeah, I mean, pretty much like hazing and bullying typically comes from that like too many people at one time. Yes. And it's like they just make a quick decision and it like almost always turns out really, really poorly for them and whoever they're picking on. Right? Yeah. It's, it just is a bad situation. Yeah. And so their, their initial thing was let's just kill him. All right, that's what they all decided. Let's kill him. But one of the brothers, and he doesn't get enough credit in this story. I don't think he ever does. But Reuben, that's true. Reuben, yeah, he talks down like all the rest of them. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah. He Reuben is there, and he says, "We can't kill our father's favorite son. Like, yeah. if we love our father, this is directly contradicting their love for our father. We cannot mm -hmm. do that." Um, and so it says that Reuben was saying this to try to rescue him from his brothers. Um, but this is what's crazy. When Reuben kind of like walks away from the situation, mm -hmm. his brothers take advantage of it and they take Joseph, they strip him, they throw him into a well, a cistern, deep, a few feet deep. And while Reuben is uh, gone, Joseph is sold into slavery. Right, yeah, like, some, like a caravan yeah. rolls past and they're like, hey, we'll sell you our brother. And they're like, yeah, we'll buy a slave, sure. Yeah. I mean, like, what horrible timing for Reuben. Like, he, he stands up to his brothers. He, he goes away. He walks away. Right. And he comes back, and instead, they didn't kill him. They sold him to slavery, which is essentially the same thing, um, because most likely they would never see Joseph again. Right. Um, and so the reason why we're telling this story is because jealousy is one of the things that Satan does to tear apart our church. Mm -hmm. right? He does it any church, any, any unified group of people that are centered around Christ. He wants us to get upset and angry when we see someone else succeeding. That shouldn't be what we do, right? I think the brothers had a right to be frustrated. But what they should have done with their frustrations is gone to their father, all right? They should right. have said, hey, like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. But instead, they decided to throw their, their brother into slavery. Right, yeah. And I don't think that that's... Which is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the more re relatable thing that happens in our culture now is we see someone succeeding, and so we try to do everything to tear them down. Right. I, I think about when I watch sports, and I, I've, I've always wondered, like, why do I not like dynasties? Like, you know, these, uh, these okay. teams, I think I've told you about this, but why do I not like teams that just dominate? And it's a very simple reason. It's because I don't want any other fan to get to experience a dynasty except for my team. Except UK. Except for UK. You are pointing UK. at your sweatshirt yes, as literally. you say this. This is the yeah. only team deserving of a dynasty. <laughs> and so 
when when I see the Golden State Warriors dominate the NBA, I, I root against them because I don't want them to have a dynasty. I want my teams to have a dynasty. Right. When I see, you know, the Patriots have the dynasty that they've had for a long time, I don't want them Until to this year. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <sighs> Tom Brady. Yes. Anyway, off track. You know, I, I want my team, the Packers, to be the dynasty. I don't want the Patriots to have it. Um, it's the same in, like, college basketball, college football. I could go through the – it's because I'm jealous. It's because I don't want – and that's bad. I should not want other teams to experience, like, loss because I just want to experience all the joy. And so when we yep. are using our gifts and our abilities to, for the church, which is what we are called to do, we're going to talk about that in, the, in this teaching video on Sunday – um, if we decide to look at someone else and compare ourselves, um, and we decide to contrast ourselves, and we decide to be jealous, that's where Satan can take away the fact. Like he, he uses that to, to destroy people. And I think one of the biggest ways in high school and middle school is you want to tear someone down, so you'll start talking about them when they're not around. Right. You'll find one little thing about them that you don't like, or two things you don't like, and you'll share that with all your buddies, and then it's you against them. And when you look at the church, it's not supposed to be you against anyone. It's supposed to be all of us together worshiping Jesus. And so right. um, when the, this story is a perfect example of this. Uh, imagine Joseph's story. Now, Joseph ends up, God uses a horrible situation to something great in Joseph's mm -hmm. life. Um, but, you know, what would have happened had his brothers not done this? I don't know. Um, but I do believe that we have to watch ourselves. Instead of being jealous of someone else's success, we need to celebrate them. Uh, we need to be happy for them uh, because when we try to tear people down, we're hurting our own church. We're hurting our own faith. We're hurting Christ. We're hurting our witness for Christ. We should be the most encouraging and uplifting people uh, because that's what we see in the Gospels. That's what Jesus was. And so, um, yeah, we can talk about that all the time. And, and so because we're looking at the story of Joseph and Cain and Abel, we're actually going to be looking at Genesis as our book of the week. Now, Genesis is a very, very... I would call it an intense book of the Bible because it yeah, just absolutely. covers so much stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Roger, tell us what we got on Genesis as our book of the week. <sighs> Genesis. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, Genesis, I mean, is, is so the, the word Genesis obviously like kind of means the beginning, right? It's, it's where things are formed from. And so that's really what Genesis is. It is uh, the first book of the whole Bible, right? You get past the... Past the uh, copyright notes and past the title page, <laughs> yes. past the, uh, the index, and then you get to Genesis, right? Um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, it begins. Um, there are 50 chapters in Genesis, a lot of stuff to cover. Um, and the type of book you see is history slash Pentateuch. Uh, Pentateuch is like the earliest books of the Bible. Yes. So this is what they were referring to in later books of the Bible, because they, they, were, they were the first five written the earliest for four, five? Yeah, Genesis, Exodus, yeah, yeah. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Yeah, yeah. And then Jews also refer to it as the Torah. Right. So yeah, Pentateuch, yeah. Torah, yeah, same. Yeah, but uh, first five books of the Bible. And so they, this was, in a lot of ways, was like the Bible that Jesus used when he was here, was yes. the Pentateuch, like these early writings. And so they pretty quickly realized that they were important, thus the reason we still have them today. But yeah, so it's kind of history, but even superseding history, it is foundational Pentateuch stuff. Um. Yeah, and so uh, we go on to the overview. You guys know, starts with Adam and Eve, um, and then just rolls through a bunch of like basically Bible heroes all the way through um, until they hit until they hit Exodus. So it's uh, yeah, basically through the life of Joseph, and then we move into yeah, and then we're in Egypt and starting to look toward Exodus. But other other than that, it's the foundation of of everything that we believe. Um, it was written in about 1430 BC during the Exodus. Um, so during that time, Moses was leading folks out. Uh, the time period covered is 4004 through 1805 BC, which is 2,200 years, um, which is a, a massive amount of time. Yes. Right? And, and at some point when you get back into these this many years ago, like, like this has some very specific years to it. Like we're making, making a few guesses as you get back there, but it's this, this time span of, of about 2,200 years. Mm -hmm. um, and the author's Moses. Yeah, Moses uh, did some writing uh, to, to help his people. As we look through the narrative of Genesis, um, we can't cover everything, but we basically kind of look at it through the lives of some major characters. Yes. Um, right off the bat, it's just creation all the way through um, the Tower of Babel. So this is uh, Adam and Eve, this is Cain and Abel. Um, this is a lot of kind of foundational beginning of the world type of stuff. Noah's uh, Ark. Yeah, Noah's Ark. Um, yeah, all of these things. And so... Uh, 
all of that basically comes to the Tower of Babel. If you don't know where the Tower of Babel is, read Genesis 11. Um, and from there, uh, basically, is when God makes, uh, after that is when God starts to make his first covenant with Abraham. And that's when uh, Abraham and his family, his descendants, all the way on to, eventually to us, become God's chosen people. Right? The Jewish people become God's chosen people through a covenant with Abraham. Um, that happens early in Genesis. So yeah, so then we roll through the life of Abraham and Sarah, of everything that they do. Abraham and Sarah have uh, Isaac. We roll through the life of Isaac, Genesis 25 through 27. We see a lot more, a lot more of Abraham, 12 through 25. And then 25 through 27 for Isaac. Isaac's son Jacob is 28 through 36. Jacob is the one who becomes Israel, is the father of Joseph. And then we get the life of Joseph from Genesis 27 all the way through uh, to the end. And uh, yeah, the life of Joseph um, is pretty big for this because Joseph has an interesting story of where he comes from, but also gains this political position in Egypt that's huge and uh, kind of saves the whole world in a lot of ways. At that point, he gets a vision from God about famine to come. And so he's prepared when no one else in the world basically is prepared. Um, and so it kind of, yeah, the, the Jewish people yeah, rise, rise their, uh, their stature a little bit in that time. Yeah, I think the, the cool thing about Genesis that you have to remember is that a lot of this stuff that Moses is writing, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, but a lot of this stuff has been oral tradition passed down um, from uh, his Jewish fathers and from, from other Jewish traditions. And so, you know, when he was a boy, he actually grew up in, in Mo, Moses actually grew up in the palace of the, uh, of the Egyptians, you know, with Pharaoh, but... His family was taught all of the, this type of stuff, uh, all of this history, mm -hmm. and then Moses put it down and recorded it. Um, and so I, I think the book of Genesis, it, it's a very, very like quick, intense, fun book to read. Yeah. Uh, there's so many action-packed, fun things to read in it. It's a, good, it's a good book. It can also be a little challenging. You know, there's a lot of debate out there about whether some of the stuff in Genesis 1 through 11 is literal or figurative or factual. And yeah, so poetic. Yeah, right? yeah. Is it supposed to be a literal history lesson or is it supposed to teach us a lesson through the storytelling? Yeah, yeah. And it's the, the church, the churches as a whole are still divided on it to this day, let alone individuals within, mm -hmm. uh, within churches. And uh, yeah, Genesis, Genesis poses a lot of problems because it's also the, you know, the, the Bible says that uh, in Genesis, like, like, is the creation story like exactly as it's told, like where God says one day and one day was actually one day, or was one day, uh, you know, kind of before days existed and it was a, a day in the throne room, or however you want to refer to it. Basically, when you start to get into the details of how the world was created, a lot of people have a lot of really strong opinions. Yes, so, they do. Exactly. And, and so <laughs> in some ways, um, there are some things that we can know, and there are some things that we can't know. Like the, the, the best that we try, the best, you know, you can dig, dig in and dig in and dig in. And there are some things that we just can't know. And so we need to be aware of that going into reading Genesis because, yeah, there are just going to be some things that we can't know. We aren't given the details for it. And so rather than spending every day of your life trying to debate with somebody exactly how something happened, like we need to see Genesis for what it is. It is foundational. It is, uh, it is a, a history lesson that teaches us how to live today. But we really need to apply it to today, right? We yeah. need to let Genesis color the way that we view the New Testament, and then we need to go out and live yeah. this message I, of faith. I think for Genesis 1 through 11, if you're someone who struggles with it, just what, if you could take away something from it, I think there's really two or three things. The first is that God created the world, and he created Absolutely. us in his image. Mm -hmm. That's huge. you you got to know that when we're talking about identity. God created us. He created us in his image. Yeah, God, do, God doesn't make accidents. Yeah, and then, All, Every one of us are made exactly as he wanted us to be made. Absolutely, and then the fall of man is a very important lesson that we cannot get to God because of, our, because of sin. Like, we right. can't. We learn that that early in the Bible, <laughs> the very first few chapters. Um, if you just get that from Genesis 1 through 11 and you believe that, then you're on track. <laughs> like, you yeah. got it. Um, don't, yeah, like, like Roger said, don't spend a ton of time trying to iron out every detail because every detail is not in there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not. We right. have to, at some point, believe um, and, and know that one day we will know. Uh, when we are right. sitting with God, we will, we will know. Uh, he will tell us. I hope he does because <laughs> I want to know about dinosaurs. 
Definitely. Yeah, really and would. if you have questions about that kind of stuff, feel free to ask ask Joel or I. Right? We have some we have some opinions. We have some. Uh, we both have degrees in this, so we've got a little bit of knowledge uh, to point folks in the right direction. Um, so feel free to feel free to ask us, but it's not the kind of thing we're going to bring up every single day from now on. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh gosh. No. <sighs> All right. Well, that has been Genesis. Um, and that has been uh, basically most of our students talk. We're almost done. Joel, what do Hebron students need to know this week? Yes, this week is our Leprechaun Rodeo. Woo! We've been looking forward to it. It's funny, a year ago, Leprechaun Rodeo was the last event we did for our high school students before COVID shut really? everything down. And so it's a year later, we're okay. doing Leprechaun Rodeo, but that is for high school and middle school from seven to nine. The doors will be open at six if you're watching this video and you Ooh. want to come out a little early, get a few chances on the bull before everyone else gets there. Do it. Uh, you could go and practice for an hour and then when everybody shows up, you're you just dominate. Like, you're standing on top of it like, I got this. Yeah, oh or you could meet the guy that's running it and pay him a little cash and say, make me look good, dude. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't care if you buy I have done that before because they have levels, <laughs> they right? Do. They do. They do. They, they can do. set that on easy and make you look like a pro. They, they absolutely can. Yes. That's my advice. Bribery. Um, <laughs> but anyway, anyway uh, so that's this <laughs> Sunday. And then we will go back into groups uh, the rest of March. So make sure you sign up for groups so you know and when and where they're meeting. Middle schools meeting every week at church from 7 to 8.30 just to make it easy. High schools at a couple of different houses in Hebrew. And so, uh, so Roger, what's going on here at Lakeside Park, Taylor Mill? Yeah, for Lakeside Park and Taylor Mill, uh, we are back in the building as we always are. Uh, this week, uh, we are starting off our True Story series, uh, which is super exciting. We're also uh, playing a game called Extreme Pictionary. Nice. Um, so if you picture Pictionary, it's like that, but extreme. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a ton of fun. I haven't, I haven't actually played this one before. Um, it's, a new, it's a new version for me too, which is cool. Um, cool. Yeah, I know. And then uh, March 17th next week uh, is three, 14, 3.14, ah, which is nice. Pi Day. Yes. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have fun uh, with some with some Pi themed things. Uh, Other than that, the announcement for middle school and high school students is that we just announced CIY for this summer, right? So if you are a sixth or a seventh grader who will be in MSM next year, then you're going with us to CIY Mix this summer, uh, which is gonna be a ton of fun. Yep. Uh, Mix is an amazing conference. We've gone for a few years now. Um, and it's a blast. We did the mix in-home version last summer. Um, so some of you are already familiar with it. If you are a current eighth grade through 12th grader, um, you get to go with us to CIY Move. We did Move At last summer, so you kind of got a piece of it, but it's gonna be this amazing conference experience. Um, everything that you ever dreamed it would be um, that might be over-promising. But no, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's an amazing conference put on by CIY. They've done this for 52 years now. I think their first camp was in 1968. They've oh done it every year since. There's gonna be 15 or 20 moves all across the country. And so we're thrilled um, to be able to, to be a part of it, kind of to join this tradition of CIY move yeah. uh, for this year. Yeah, so, I challenge you to, this is a great opportunity. If you have a friend that you want to get involved in our student ministry, this is a great way for them to say sayonara to their parents for a week right. and hello to Jesus for a week. All right, and so <laughs> I would just encourage you to, to find a friend and make it your mission that they are with you at either mix or move. That is your goal, is to get them there mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, um, you'll, you'll have more fun if they're there. They'll absolutely. have more fun if they're with you. Right? Yeah. We, I always did that whenever I was young. I would invite friends to camp because like, why not? And especially this year because camp, if you register during the month of March, is only $330, right? Which is super, super affordable for your parents, um, which is an amazing price, which means more people can go. Yep. Yeah, and uh, if you have any, any issues right now with financial assistance, please, please, please reach out to us. We have a form online that you can fill out. We don't want anybody to miss out on mix or move. Uh, because of a money issue, so please, uh, yeah, let us know. Absolutely. Tell your friends that, yeah, same thing. All right, well, that has been Students Talk. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next week. Mm-hmm.